Good morning all. I've just made a first look review of this Opus BT-C100 battery charger which is really neat um, in that it has this feature where you don't have to connect it to a power supply. That's a 12 volt input there. Uh, there's also a 5 volt USB input there but it will run standalone because it actually runs from the cell that's inside it assuming that it's a lithium cell and you've got enough voltage to run the electronics. So really neat device, but what I really want to do is take these four screws out and see what's inside. Uh, but just before I do that, I just want to mention that this can do three quite interesting things without power connected. Obviously you can't charge the cell because, well, your cell can't charge itself, can it? But what you can do is put it into a mode where you uh, discharge so it will discharge um, at a current that you select here. Um, that's half an amp and it will discharge and give you a milliamp hour reading again without anything connected to it. You can also uh, put it into an impedance test mode. Let's do that. There's the impedance test. So it's given me an, uh, an internal resistance of this cell of 218 milliohms. Uh, when it stops flashing, that will actually take another reading so now it's 182 milliohms not entirely sure how accurate that is although it does seem to correlate reasonably well with a uh, electronic standalone tester that i had in the other day uh, what else can it do discharge impedance test oh yeah of course it can also um, power up the usb output let's do that one i'll try to just plug this in first little torch head on there uh, press and hold the right hand button to enable the USB output, that's currently off, let's switch it to on and when it stops flashing and accepts my command it will turn on the little LED lamp and there it goes and now you can monitor uh, voltage on the USB output 5.1 current on the USB output not very uh, high precision on that but uh, 100 milliamps and amp hours on the USB output so you can get a rough idea of how much charge you've transferred from this cell into an external device. You can also watch the voltage on this cell while you're doing all that. It's great, it's got lots of features, but like I say, I want to take it apart. So four Phillips screws, no nasty security screws. The back panel does seem to be a bit stressed, I'm not quite sure what's stopping it fitting very well but let's see what's inside here when we lift the lid okay that one's not quite undone ah interesting so here's the 12 volt input um, there is what looks like a voltage regulator here's the 5 volt power input uh, micro usb little chip blob there covered in this epoxy stuff that's presumably doing the main work. Uh, this is the 5 volt output. There's a chip here which could possibly be a boost converter. Uh, can't see an inductor there, maybe that's on the other side. Uh, to convert the uh, cell voltage up to 5 volts. A couple of large resistors here, brown, red, gold. So it's 1, 2 and some multiplier one of the reverse multipliers, so it's probably 0.12 or 0.012 or something along those lines. Uh, or, or is it actually? I can't remember. I can't remember my color codes for gold. But uh, these two resistors are presumably the load which the unit uses for discharging the cell. Uh, springy slide mechanism here. This feels loose actually. It feels like it should come out. Let me just get some pliers. If that peg, yes, that peg does come out, and then the spring comes away. That's good. So now I'm going to undo these two screws and take the board out. Whoops, my camera's a bit close, and I'm whacking it with the screwdriver. Now, is this going to come out? Yes, it is. Oh, there's the display with a really long zebra strip and a white piece of something that just sits behind it. That's what gives it its really nice white uh, look. 
I've got to work out how that fits back in there now. Okay, I'll come back to that. So there must be some sort of backlighting thing. Screws are dropping out. Yeah, so here's the backlighting for the display. It's some distance away from the display, but there are four LEDs there. Uh, right, now we can see the inductor. So there's an inductor here. There's another chip here as well. So which of these two chips, this 8-pin one or the one on this side, is actually the boost converter for USB? I'm not quite sure. Possibly this one. A 2R2 inductor there, 330 inductor there, what's that, 33 micro Henry's. There's a crystal here, presumably for the CPU, and the two switches to operate the unit. Three uh, electrolytic capacitors on the back. Right, this little 8-pin chip here, which is next to this 2R2 inductor and the 5 volt USB output, is uh, an MST9225B, and that is a boost converter chip. And that's this uh, milestone semiconductor uh, high efficiency current mode boost converter, 2.5 to 6 volt input, maximum output is 6 volts. This will be uh, pegged to 5 volts, uh, 1.2 meg switching frequency, and a very low uh, on resistance for the MOSFET of 70 milliamps. Well, not very low, but uh, certainly low for one of these boost converters. Uh, this 8-pin chip here on the other side is an AX3121, and you can see that that's got um, a capacitor there and an inductor there. Now that's a synchronous buck converter, and uh, my assumption is that that's taking the 12 to 16 volts on the DC input here and bringing it down possibly to 5 volts to match the input that uh, comes from the USB input and which is then used subsequently to charge the cell. And uh, this regulator is an HT7530 100 milliamp LDO regulator, which I'm guessing takes 5 volts down to either 3 or 3.3 for the main chip and probably also the LCD. Now the question is, can I get this back together again and get the LCD aligned with the pads on the PCB there so that it all works? Let's uh, see how we go. So maybe I'll try passing this uh, upwards with this this way around. Oops, more things have fallen out. Let's see if I can put that in there. Hmm. Yeah, that seems to be roughly right. Probably have to give that a bit of a brush to make sure I've got no contaminants on the zebra strip. Now I've got to put these things back. Uh, I think that must go in that way around. And the buttons has a little bevel edge on it, so that's going to have to go that way around, I think. And in there somehow. Yeah, that's it. Right, so I refitted the spring on the slide mechanism. Let's put these two screws back in. Now there's nothing much holding that front down because that presses against that zebra strip. So it's only a bit of springiness in the PCB that's really holding that. So it'll be very interesting to see whether that still works. Let's put a cell in and uh, see if it lights up. Well, the back illumination LEDs have come on. But those buttons are a bit sunk in and in, and it's only when I press on the PCB to push it against the zebra strip that the display actually comes on. So what I'm assuming is that these screws here are also part of the process of holding everything in place. So I'm going to put the back cover on as well now. And uh, yes, that all looks good with the rear cover screwed in place. There's still a bit of a bow in the middle there, it doesn't seem to sit quite flat, but with these front screws in, holding the uh, zebra strip against the display, everything is now functioning again, 4.1 volts, uh, no charging current because of course there's no power to do that, so let's switch in, plug in my 12 volts, provide a supply for charging the battery, that's now charging at just under 1 amp, and the voltage is up to 4.13 volts. Good. 
So I really like this battery charger. Um, as you'll see, if you look at my first look review of this thing, which is over on my reviews channel, I'll put a, a, a link to that somewhere on the screen, uh, mainly because of its ability to just sit and run without a power supply connected to it. Obviously you can't charge it in that mode, but you can do the other things, the impedance test, the discharge, and uh, using the USB 5 volts output. I do think it would have been nice if the uh, 5 volt USB output were on the back and also the 12 volt input were also on the back because then you could stack several of these things side by side and build your own multi-cell charger uh, with each cell having an independent display. So it's a little bit of a shame. They've sensibly put the 5 volt USB in on the front but uh, if they could have moved those two things round to the back that would have made it uh, even better I think. So I'm really liking this uh, little single cell charger and uh, now that I've taken it apart and seen what's inside well I like it even more. Cheerio!